Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today, we are building, doing a quick review and a sound test of an interesting keyboard that's currently available at KP Republic on a group buy until October 31st or Halloween. Boo! Today, we're going to be building the Heavy Care 65, an interesting keyboard to say the least. Um, when I first saw pictures of it, I, I was like, I like the Brutalist design. I wonder, you know, if it has any other surprises and it kind of did. There is no build guide. So I hope that this can help serve as a build guide for you, or at least help if you have any questions. So first is first, we have this beautiful keyboard case that it comes in. Opening up the case, we find that we have the PCB and when I first looked at the PCB, I must say I was a little surprised. The few pictures I had seen of this keyboard before it was sent out to me appeared like it had RGB LEDs. Not that I have to have it, but when I looked at the PCB, I was like, huh, uh, there must be a version with and without, as this one was the Bluetooth version. Um, I kind of just chalked it up to that. But then I got to the FR4 plate and notice that it had traces as well as what appeared to be LEDs at every key slot. Then I went to look and where is the connector? How does this connect to the PCB to control the RGB, to control, you know, turn it on, turn it off. What's going on? Because there wasn't a connector for the PCB. I don't know for sure, but the only thing that I can gather is that it's using the four standoffs that connect the plate to the PCB as traces, as lanes to transfer data and power to the LEDs. That's all I can gather because otherwise they're not having, <laughs> there is no contact between the two. Anyway, barring that, we see that we also have a bag with all of the screws, the hardware, um, the matching the stabilizers I, I found to actually be very nice. All I did was uh, put a little bit of grease on the stabilizers with a paintbrush. Lubricating the wires and assembling the stabilizers, I went ahead and laid down the IXPE sheet that's included with the kit. I put down the pads for the stabilizers and then installed the stabilizers, ensuring that they were working just fine. It's it's a rule that I, I just can't repeat enough. Always test stabilizers before closing things up when they're screw on stabilizers, because otherwise you're probably going to have to take everything apart just to get to them. So once we got that put together, I did come across a, another thing. I was like, wait a minute, how does light get to this diffuser window on the sign? And while I was looking everywhere else, I didn't think to look in the baggie with the gaskets. It is available both as a bare bone kit, as well as one that's preloaded with switches and keycaps. And it has a knob and a knobless version. Uh, the bare bone kit starts at $249 and it goes up from there, depending on what choices you want. So with this one, I did have the knob version. And after I found the diffuser, I was like, all right, good. I've got everything I need. I was like, how do I get the, the, the top half to connect and stay connected to the bottom half? Because when I was first taking it apart, I was the mid frame, I guess you could call it, was coming along with the top frame. Uh, just so you know, this is not a magnetic um, top frame. It can be removed, but what it is, it's pressure fit. So after getting the stabilizers installed, as well as the IXPE sheet, I decided to go ahead and load it up the, the switches. So I installed the plate PCB dampening foam. It also has the pocket for the side diffuser. And I installed the FR4 plate. Again, I did use the four screws included to attach the plate and the PCB together. Once that was done, I went ahead and loaded up with KPR BCPs or Black Cherry Pies. I've previously done a review on these. These are currently my favorite 
if not my most expensive linears. I, I, I think they have the perfect balance of weight and sound and tone. And I think they worked out pretty well in this build. And they may just have found a permanent home, though I, I have been testing them in a lot of keyboards. <laughs> anyway, I also installed the gasket socks on the FR4 plate and put in the mid-frame PVC, which is sort of like a force brake mod that is included. At that point, I went ahead and connected up the JST cable. Um, it does have a, a PET film uh, to protect the electronics that laid down at the bottom. And it also has a, uh, a, a foam cutout for the bottom of the PCB or between the PCB and the bottom of the case. I, in this build, I went ahead and used all the foams included. So once I fit the top frame on there and I was sure that the side diffuser was coming through properly and there was no uh, binding with the knob stem, I went ahead and closed it up using the eight included. Actually, I think they included a couple extra uh, bolts for the top. And then I loaded it up with a set of keycaps from Dami Key. Uh, these are Snake Chaser. Uh, I think the pre-built one comes with Dami Key keys, but it's a different colorway. It looks a little bit more like industrial. And when I come back to this one, I have an XDA industrial set that I'm going to load up because I think it's going to work just fine with this kit. So after loading everything up and getting to play with it with keys, I got to say, I am really, really liking it. Uh, I Nowadays, there seems to be a lot of similarities between keyboards and this one brings a couple of different things now to me the leds being on the plate and not on the pcb and there not being a clear way i like i said it has to be the um screw posts the studs and the screws that attach to the plate to the pcb that are acting as the channels for the leds but to me, I, it's, I still think it's a little bit almost magical because it's so cool how it's like, okay, you, you need to, if, if it required a cable or having to do some weird plug for the PCB, it would have just been a little odd. In my opinion, it's very interesting and it makes this keyboard stand out from the rest. Now, I know there's some people that, you know, don't like their RGB or don't want RGB, but for those that say, hey, that south facing RGB, is always kind of pointing in my face. This one is south facing on the plate, but because of the position of the plate or the position that the LEDs are on the plate, they shine up or back instead of forward into your eyes. So for those folks that don't like south facing because the south facing tends to strike up or forward to them, it's they're not going to have that issue with these. Um, the light's going to go board or towards the back of the keyboard. Now, uh, that's another thing I noticed that despite me using uh, switches, the BCPs that do not have a, an SMD LED window, I still was able to see the RGB quite well. The knob, another very interesting uh, design. It is a, what they call it, I think a twisted pyramid. Um, I want to say there was a Rubik's that was pyramid or pyramid shaped but I could just be my imagination. Um, obviously, it, it's a little sharp if you just use one finger to press it down, so it's recommended to use two and just press it down from the sides. But it has a ni nice, satisfying click, um, and it, uh, it has the, um, the clicks as you turn, so it, it gives you feedback for every step. So fully loaded up, uh, this keyboard, I've got to say, is it's quite the beast, um, weighing it at over 1.6 kilograms and offering a typing angle. They say 8.5. I got eight when I test it, but um, it's somewhere between eight and nine. I did not have any problem uh, while using a wrist rest. I do like how the feet are done. It's like a strip of silicone along the bottom, but they are thicker at either end making that where it stands up or away from uh, the typing surface. Now, the, it does have an on and off switch that is actually directly below the uh, daughter board for the USB-C. And it's, uh, it's unobtrusive. 
the heft of the keyboard, the fact that it has magic with the LEDs on the FR4 plate, as opposed to it directly on the PCB, the fact that it's Bluetooth and also VIA compatible, it checks a lot of boxes for me. On top of that, stock with all the foams, it sounds lovely. I think I might be able to get the sound a little bit better, but as is, once built, I mean, it's already been at my desk for the last couple of days, and it's just felt like second nature. I, I like this keyboard. Um, there's There hasn't been too many exciting keyboards as of late. A lot of them have been following specific styles. I mean, how many 75% with knobs and or screens do we have now? Quite a few. Don't get me wrong. I still I, I got to have my knob and I do like a screen. But this one, like I said, it, it has a different body style. It uses that the LEDs on the plate without any special connections. And it just has a very, what I would call brutalist design, which I appreciate. It almost gives me an industrial, almost steampunk type of vibe. Plus the fact that I pretty much enjoy every keyboard that has a removable shroud because being able to go topless, <laughs> so to say, um, it's an instant change. So you can do the, the keyboard that makes, in my opinion, a huge difference. And it's, I mean, it doesn't take much time at all. And the only problem is, you know, misplacing the top and being stuck on that design. But I, I thank KP Republic for giving me the opportunity to build and review this keyboard. I am quite enjoying it. And for now, it has become my daily driver with my, <laughs> I do have a yellow macro pad, which I'm using next to it now. So um it's been a few weeks since i've used it as 65 percent as my daily for more than just a few hours uh i've been using an 1800 as of late so but i've been thoroughly enjoying this one and tap dancing as my one of my youngest likes to say um on the keyboard and enjoying it so i do hope that you guys um enjoyed the build and my review of this keyboard i think it's it's very nice and and it offers a different design a couple of different options that make it stand out from the rest of the knob 65 percent that are out there right now so i'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the heavy pair 65 loaded up with keep your republic's black cherry pies and Dami Key Snake Chaser Double Shot ABS Cherry Keycap Set. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.